This is an updated video for Castlewood clients who want to use Photosizer to resize and optimize your images for your website. Photosizer is one of the best free tools for this. And if you try and you use it a lot, I highly recommend that you send the developer a donation for his time. He's put a lot of work into this and does a good job at keeping it updated. You can find a link for that on our website or go to photosizer.com. Uh, but remember, photo is spelled with an F instead of a PH. And by the way, we don't get any money for recommending this. Photosizer is really easy to use, especially after you set it up once. And that's mainly what I'm going to go over today. When you first start Photosizer, if you go to this first drop down menu here, you'll see that the default is to use the last time settings and you can just leave it here. Um, or better yet, you can save these settings after we've done them. And um, that way, if something was to get lost, you can always go back and choose them, or you could have different settings for different uses. So let's keep that in mind. The second drop down, the resize image, we recommend to our Castlewood clients that you choose side, the longest side, and then change this to 800 pixels. It does 800. Make sure this right over here says PX and also click on do not enlarge if smaller. Um, because when you have an image that say happens to be smaller than that, uh, you never want to enlarge an image because it will wind up being blurry or pixelated on your screen. The next is you can skip over effects. You can skip over rotation because you won't be using those um, just to optimize your images for your website. The miscellaneous settings, what uh, we recommend, um, again, for our clients is to change the qua qua quality to uh, 85% here. And then I would click on here to change the DPI, even though it is set to 96. I'd go ahead and do that just in case um, something was to get changed. You've got, you have that option. Um, then here, um, I would check the ping optimization, even though uh, the ping images were later on, we're going to have them converted into JPEGs. And then keep the original file creation date. Um, just uh, again, I think for future reference, you're going to want that. Then down to this last setting, the destination setting, you are going to uh, you're going to click save to the folder, which I mean, you've gonna, it's already there, so you're going to leave it there. Then we are going to put it into the same as the original. This is going to put it back into the same folder where they came from. It prevents you from having to go and search for your images. Um, we're not going to duplicate our source image, so we'll uncheck that. The output format, we are going to change that to JPEG. We want all of our images to be converted into JPEG, including those pings that I was mentioned earlier. The file name uh, is the same as the original. Well, no, we're, I'm sorry, we're going to change it into a custom because we're going to come down here, file name mask, and you're going to choose this crazy little character, percentage F, percentage W times percentage H. So what that's going to do is that's going to keep the image's name the same as the original, but it's going to add this extra, uh, this extra masking at the end of it, which is basically says keep the name, but then add the width times the height. That way you'll always be able to look at your image and know what the dimensions are. And again, it, it prevents you from overwriting your originals because you may want to use those later on down the road for say a banner or something like that. And that's, that's really it. Um, if we come up here again, if you leave all these and never change anything, it'll stay there. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you want to be on the safe side, you can change it to something like 800 by 800 by 96, just so you'll know what it is. And that way you can always go back and get to it. And so that's it. The settings are complete. So now let's resize some images. Open a folder with your original pictures in it, which I have over here. And all you have to do is drag the images over and drop them into this little window here. Push the start over here and then presto, your, your images are optimized perfectly. Before I do that, I wanted to point out to you that you can see that these images here are uh, 
1,446 kilobytes, 1,110 kilobytes. Take note that that's quite a bit of memory, that um, a space that your pictures are going to be taking up on the website. And that takes a lot longer for them to load on a, on a uh, computer, especially on a mobile phone. So we're going to highlight all those images, drag them over here. Then we just push start. And that fast, you can see that they're already over here. Now you can clear out these for your next batch of images by just removing all and they're done. Now let's take a look here. So let me spread this just a little bit so you can see the size. So we have an image here that was 1446, now is down to 62. And here you can see that, that we went uh, from uh, 1110 down to 50. So those are huge file size savings. So you can imagine how much quicker those images are going to load on a mobile phone, for example. And the quality is not going to be any different. The, the user will not be able to see any difference because more than likely you're never going to have your image at 800 by 800 anyway. Um, even if you're using them on a website, generally for most websites, you'll bring the image down to say 400. Um, and so it's going to look like this. The quality is no difference, but the, the file savings size is unbelievable. And then that's it. Um, as always, if you are a Castlewood client, uh, feel free to to email us or give us a call if you're still having issues with optimizing your images for your website. Thanks for watching. This is David from Castlewood Studios, your website people, signing out. Have a good day.